I absolutely love traveling these old back roads of these communities. This is where our history is, what's left of it, and I love to travel. And I come across old things like this, besides the old houses, old stores. Some of them are really old. They're all just about gone. But a few of them are standing here and there. And they're hard to find, I'll tell you. Here's an old one from way back with her grandpa, way back before my time. Lucky this is still standing. But they're still around. Now these stores, some of them still around. Here's one that's probably 60, 70 years old. Don't get much business like it used to, but they're still around. But most of them look like this nowadays. They've not been down too long, but they're just the business they just can't afford to operate. So they're just old buildings, old storage places scattered all up and down these rural communities. They all boarded up or they're all torn down or just about ready to fall down. These are some old stores. Here's one in the Hamilton community of Union County. Now this one's got some old history. This one goes back to the 1840s. An old store, boarding house, way back, but it's still standing. But they're still around, they just ain't as many as they used to be, they're far and few in between. Now everybody remembers growing up, your old memories, an old country store, not far away, about every crossroad had them, across America out in the country, these rural areas, not just the Appalachians. And everybody seemed like anywhere you got on these back roads, there's an old country store not far down the road. Because they didn't travel much, they walked mostly. Seemed like everybody was at a little old country store, especially on a Saturday, doing some trading, they called it. And everybody about knowed everybody in these little old country stores, these small communities. They know the stranger when they seen one. But mostly everybody was just friends, neighbors, family. And they were mostly owned by just mom and pop people. You know them and they know you. And you done a lot of trading. What I mean by trading? They kept a ticket at the store, they'd pay off every so often, every month, or once a year, according on their agreement. But the places was always full of people. People playing checkers, sitting around telling stories, reading. There was always somebody at it. And some of the old stores, they would cut hair and stuff. On the weekend, I can remember stuff like that. They were always busy, and they thrived pretty good in these little communities. And sometimes, you just had the stores to yourself. So peaceful sometimes. But these little stores, the mom and pops, they take good care of you when you come in there. Anything you needed, or they would get it for you. So that was as part of the community as anything. And you can remember young, you'd walk into the store with your friends or your cousins just on a Sunday afternoon or Saturday or something, going down to the old country store with a pocket full of change if you's lucky, get you a candy bar, something to drink, bag of tater chips, and have a good old time. It'd be gone by the time you got home. And they'd cut you anything you needed like grandmother would always want me to get a pound of bologna sliced up, take it back. And they'd walk back up these hollers. It didn't matter where you from in these mountains. Hollers, creeks. And a lot of people done their shopping this way. They didn't have nothing to ride. They walked. They walked back and forth to the store. And out in these country areas, some of these big farm places, 
It may be a mile to the store. Long walk. But they done it many a time. That's just the way they growed up. Now me, I'm going to tell you a story of how it was when I growed up. This is me and my two other brothers. I got a sister, but she was real young at this time. But anyway, we always tried to make us a few dollars. Mom and Dad would always give us what we need, but not what we want. They wanted us to teach us to earn what we needed. So we'd get up sometimes on a Saturday, no school or nothing going on. I was too young to work the farms at that time or make any money. So we would collect pot bottles. And we'd get up way at the crack of dawn here, fog still on. Drag that old wagon out. Me and my older, uh, next oldest brother. And we'd work all day long up and down these old roadways, county roads, community roads, looking for pot bottles. And they was always pot bottles. You could work them one week, and next week it'd be full of them again, people slinging them out the window. But that was good money. Three to five cents, I can remember back in them days. But you had to be careful, because all the other kids in the community, they'd be watching you. This was a competition on these pot bottles. It was easy money if you was willing to work at it. And the whole neighborhood was in on it. It was just a big competition. We was all friends, but when it come to them pot bottles, who gets there first? That's the way it was. And you'd see other friends while you was working the road, coming and going from the store. Just the good old days, good old friends, people you know. And we especially like to work these old creeks below the road. They would, they would get down in them creeks and you couldn't see them. We love to get down there in the summer play in the water, and find them. We found them many of them. And they, we, they'd be dirty. We'd have to clean them up. Most places wouldn't take them unless you cleaned them. So we'd gather them all up when we got a good load, and we'd clean them up. I'd get old mom's wash tub up here. We'd, she'd have a couple of them. We'd have them full of pot bottles soaking all for cool day. And she'd fuss at us, especially when it come laundry day, when she couldn't use her big old tubs to rinse or soak something, we'd have them full of pot bottles. And we'd have to get them out. But finally, we'd get them clean, get them cleaned up. And sometimes, buddy, we would have two or three hundred of these things in just a few days or a week or so. And we'd get them cleaned up. And Dad, when he was off, we wouldn't go to the little store. We'd go down to town here and take them where they They'd give us a little bit better money on them. And we, he, he could haul them for us. We couldn't haul all that in the wagon. We'd go downtown and, and we'd trade them in here. And while mom done some shopping, so we done pretty good that. We'd get us two or three dollars, you know, if we're lucky. But we'd save our money and we'd take them down to the local store that we walked to, the little country store, not far from the house. And we love to trade with them. And if you took care of your money, you got two or three good trips out of this place, out of what you saved up. And oh yeah, old R.C. Cole and the Moon Pie, a bag of tater chips, an old candy bar, or a push-up ice cream cone. It was always fun. Always. So I, I just share these little stories with you to bring back your memories. Y'all had your special place in your mind when you was growing up, places where you'd went. And I hope you enjoy these little stories to bring back of our past, things that's going away. So, I want to thank you for watching. God bless, and I'll see you next time.